So I mentioned it in one of my book hauls, and here it is, The High Crusade, my review. This review is going to be a little different because I'm going to spoil a bunch of stuff while we discuss this. It's quite a trip. Like, look at that ship. Look at all those dudes. There's like little crusaders and stuff on there. I'm going to read the book flap, and then we can get into it. In the year of grace, 1345, as Sir Roger, Baron of de Tourneville, was gathering an army to join King Edward III in the war against France, a most astonishing event occurred. A huge silver ship descended through the sky and landed in a pasture beside the little village of Ansby in northeastern Lincolnshire. That's the first little paragraph in the jacket. And, I mean, that's how the story starts. It's written from the POV of a priest. He works as the translator for the aliens eventually. And he's kind of being used to communicate with the aliens, even when he can't communicate with the aliens. And yeah, it starts with this big old ship landing next to that town. The aliens come out of the ship and they're like, well, so anyways, I started blasting. And they zap a dude and then they just all get like murked by the uh, town guard and like the knights. And all but one is killed. He's locked in a prison cell and the cleric is trying to communicate with him and stuff like that. And eventually they manage to wrangle him into getting them into the ship and they're going to fly to the Holy Land in this ship and fight. But what ends up happening instead is the alien dude pulls a pulls a fast one on him and they use faster than light travel and they go to the closest outpost of his alien civilization. He tries to get them killed but what ends up happening instead is these knights just charge these aliens who have only ever fought with ranged weapons. Like, it's been thousands of years since anyone's cracked someone's head open or stabbed someone. So they didn't know what to do. And so these knights end up taking over this planet with these aliens. And then you get this weird thing where they take the other aliens that have been subjugated by the worst Gorix and uses those former slaves to fight and conquer the Wurzgorix Empire. The story ends up finishing with thousands of years have gone by, or not quite thousands, I think a thousand years have gone by, and Earth has managed to come in contact with this intergalactic human civilization that was founded by this lord and the people he took with him, like his, his, uh, his wives and like his knights and their wives and whatever that all went with them, and they slowly grew up into this civilization. Another interesting tidbit toward the end of the book, he does a really good job of talking about a human civilization that was built on just a bunch of crusaders going off and disappearing. So you get, you know, a thousand years goes by and you've got these guys that are like, it's been so boring since we conquered the dragons 10 years ago. I really hope we find another place where we can crusade to. I think that that's one of the things about this. You got to go into this knowing this is this is pretty humorous, not in like a a ha ha dropping jokes kind of way, but it's just it's just absurd and entertaining. And I don't know what else you want out of a short science fiction book from 1960. I was talking to a friend about this story, and I was like, yeah, you know, like he showed up in this new land, and he used the help of the people who had been subjugated by the empire to overthrow the empire. And then I was like, wait a second, isn't this just a different version of the Cortez conquering of the Aztecs? So you have Europeans landing in a new world and with the help of local tribes and slaves subjugated by the intergalactic empire, they overthrow the empire. That sounds incredibly familiar. I don't know if that whole... Europeans using former slaves to overthrow an empire thing is uh, intentional, but there's a very good chance it is. I don't think Paul Anderson would accidentally put something like that in a story like this. Usually I talk about the copy of the book I have before I start talking about the book, but I forgot. What I have is a very, very nice book club edition hardcover. It says 1960 inside the book, which is probably right. Another thing about this book, it's on Appendix N, and it's so bizarre that this is on Appendix N. I guess Gary Gygax was going for something with aliens running into knights, and you can see with the 
cleric in this story, because he is called a cleric at some points in the story, it kind of makes sense that Gygax included it. I know I've mentioned it before, but Appendix N is the list in the back of the first edition D&D Dungeon Master's Guide where Gary Gygax talks about all of the science fiction and fantasy that was a major influence for the game. And like I said, this is kind of bizarre that it's there. I guess you've got aliens showing up and weird things happening and you have a cleric. I don't know. I guess the more I think about it, the more it makes sense that it's on the list. It is very quirky, a lot like a lot of the early D&D adventures. The way it's written doesn't disappoint. I mean, it's Paul Anderson. He's so good. Everything I've read from him has been above good to one of the greatest things I've ever read. So I don't think you'll be disappointed on that front. If you've read Paul Anderson before and you like his works, this will be a quick, easy, very enjoyable read. Well, here it is. Another short book, short review. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you've read it or you have any other Paul Anderson you recommend reading. I might have read it already, but if I did, then I'll talk to you about it. And with that, I'll see you next time.